Hi, I am Tom, and this is Sweet Maria's Coffee. And I'm going to talk today about monitoring roast temperature in a roast, and I'll be using the Popper Air Roaster to do that. And I want to talk about why would you want to monitor the temperature, to log the temperature, and uh, what the benefits are to that. And also, um, we're going to lead end up with talking about how to use Artisan, which is a roast logging program using these little connectors, which are from a company called Fidgets, in order to connect your computer to your popper to monitor your roast temperature for you. The computer doesn't control the roaster, it doesn't do anything, but just logs in the temperature profile as you do a roast. So let's start with the basics. Why do you even want to do this? Why do you want to make your coffee roasting more complicated? So, um, you know, the first thing is that in coffee roasting, the most important thing is the coffee roaster to control the roast. And I don't mean the machine, I mean you as the person roasting coffee. You have these great sensory <laughs> inputs. You have sight, smell, sound, a sense of time. And you, know, you can make good decisions and adjustments as you go along. That's traditional coffee roasting. And I think that's the most important skill to develop no matter what machine you use or where you go with your coffee roasting. So I think it's important to note that. The question is, you may be using all of those things, trying to get the best results you can, and you're not getting a, a, sight, a vision into what the roast process is. You're finding things go this way and that way, you're making, it's difficult for you to make those decisions and control. Better. Besides your own senses, you add some uh, input from a thermometer. So let's talk specifically about the Popper coffee roaster. Here's an air roaster. It has control of uh, fan speed, time, and, and heat. And the first thing you want to know is like, well, what do these settings mean? Um, some of them are constant, so you don't really have to worry about them. But for example, the temperature, you can change that. And making decisions on when you should change it and how is, is why perhaps knowing the temperature is a good thing. I wanted to add that you can see way over there, I'm using a watt meter. Now, the use of a watt meter, you just plug this in the wall. You plug the machine into it. This is good for almost any coffee roaster, including not air roasters like Be More. Because what this will tell you is how many watts are being consumed by the appliance as it's running. Um, with a coffee roaster, when you're changing this dial, this is going to register here. And so what it does is it gives you an actual number instead of just saying, well, that's about the one o'clock position. <laughs> that's about 12 noon. It actually gives you a number and gives you insight into what your setting actually means. So I really suggest this because it's so simple. You don't have to do anything. And it will enlighten you on, on the changes you're making and um, how that's affecting your coffee roast. So let's start with one of those. So let's say you've decided, yes, I would love to know the roast temperature of the coffee. Sign me up. How do I do that? Well, let's just start with the simplest way to do it. That would be a, a thermometer like this. This has a probe. And you can find a way to mount this into the popper coffee roaster. I'll show you how you do it. And you can watch the temperatures. You can have a timer or use the timer on the popper and then log it in on a piece of paper. This works great. And I highly recommend this. This is a roast I did recently, Guatemala Shina Bahul. And you can see I wrote, noted the temperatures at each increment of time. I noticed the time that I heard the first pop of first crack. Um, and the temperature, and then when I thought that first quack crack was going along rapidly, and the time and the temperature, and then when it ended, and when I ended the roast. This has given me all of my data. If you're really geeky, you can get out some graph paper and plot it. And when we're training somebody here at Sweet Maria's to use our Probat drum coffee roaster, this is actually what we do. It's old school, but it really focuses your attention, uh, doesn't distract you, no instrumentation. And you really learn a lot by just manually logging in your rows. So when I start talking about how we've set up Artisan and Fidgets to monitor this coffee roaster, that we're using two probes. And that's kind of an ideal. That's what they do in the professional world. Um, and the idea is that you have one probe in the coffee mass as it roasts, 
and you have another probe in the air temperature, so it's the environment temperature around there. And then you can compare the two, and that's kind of instructive. So we have this barbecue thermometer that we're offering. It's pretty low cost too, and it has these really high quality probes that are really easy to mount in the coffee roaster. So I wanna talk about the pros and cons of adding thermometers to your coffee roaster. So we use these K-type thermocouples, which have a very good heat range for coffee roasting. And with an air roaster, it's quite simple. Uh, with a drum roaster like a Beemore, it's quite more complicated to actually get the coffee probe into the green coffee. Um, I'd say that's almost a challenge. I wouldn't even touch it. But here in a, in a popper coffee roaster, there's two positions where we've drilled a hole in the back. This axis here doesn't have any electronics, so it's pretty safe. And you can basically match that drill diameter to the probe that you're gonna use and fit it inside the roast chamber. And that's what this looks like here. Now something really important with temperature measurement, if you're gonna position probes into a roaster, is that the probe is staying in a set position. The problem is, is that if you wanted to just find an easy route, like snake this probe through the top of the popper uh, into the coffee, it's not going to stay in a fixed position. As the coffee moves around, the air moves, it's going to be moving as well. That gives you, uh, actually invalidates pretty much your measurements across the board. So unfortunately, you need to sort of figure out a way to get the, the probe to stay in a fixed position. Um, these aren't lock <coughs> Shit. What I'm using here are raw thermocouples. And the good thing about those is they're cheap and they're very, very responsive to, to heat changes. So they actually have a, an advantage. The problem is, is they don't stay put quite as well. Um, although I would say if you drill the hole just larger and fit them in through here, it stays uh, in position well enough and works, I think, very well. Um, we sell rigid thermocouples that will absolutely stay put they're a little less sensitive to temperature change. In the video description, I'll have the link to a long video about installing thermocouples in the popper, but that focuses on stainless steel thermocouples, and I'm mainly talking about raw thermocouples here that we're using for artisans, so you're making two drill holes. And it's really important to note the locations down the center line and where I start the measurement from because it's going to be off if you start from the top of the machine. And it's also just really important to choose the right drill bit and to be sure you're going to drill perpendicular. You can eyeball it. You don't need a drill press, but just focus and get it right because if you go off to the side or high or low, it misses the right mark in the roast chamber. So here's another question. Why would anybody want to do more than just manually logging in the roast temperatures? Um, perhaps it's because you want to do it all the time and that's fairly tedious. It takes your uh, attention and perhaps uh, your visually takes your uh, mind and focus away from the coffee. But also that it's, um, it's fun, it's interesting. It's actually not that complicated. And to me, I'm a little bit in the between being technophobic and sort of technophile. I'll say this though, is for me, someone who's a little more technophobic and does something technical actually probably is really convinced of the reason to do that. And some sort of technophile people just do it for the sake of doing it. And the problem with coffee roasting is a lot of people that sort of embrace technology and stuff end up sort of using it aimlessly and talking about it without a purpose. So I'm kind of more in the camp of people who are intimidated by doing this, but decide to do it anyway. And that's who I really want to talk to here to encourage you to find out if any of this is right for you and to just figure out what level you want to do this at if it is. So the interesting thing here is you can be automatically logging in on a graph live as you, as you do your roast, you can be referring to that and making changes here. Um, this is nothing other than doing exactly what we did when we were writing on paper and uh, had a probe in there and was checking the temperature and logging it. It's not controlling the roaster. It's not doing anything else. 
but it's another source of information to tell you, you know, what happened to that roast? What did I do when I had that really good roast? Why? You know, and you can refer to the log. It's not the full answer because there's a lot of other variables. In fact, in here today, it's 84 degrees, and that's going to be a lot different for coffee roasting than if it's uh, 70 degrees. And I wanted to point out something else that's a little bit skewed here, is you can't always take what you measure here and check it with, you know, Larry or Susan down the street and say, see the same measurements. The problem is there's a lot of variables uh, with where you position the probe. And also just the fact that a probe into the coffee isn't truly measuring 100% the temperature of that coffee. Especially with an air roaster, you have this hot air mass flowing through. So it ends up being a combination of both the contact with the beans, which is pretty good, and partially the, uh, the heat source itself blowing through it. It's hard to isolate those two. And I say that because what you'll see when you measure with Artisan and this sort of a, a probe is like, for example, a higher first crack temperature than we would see on our commercial roaster downstairs. We'll get first crack there at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we might see it at 415 degrees. So that's because it's a combination of, of the heated air and the bean. But for our own reference to say, this happened on this roast, and then I did a roast this other day, and this happened, it's a great resource. So you can use it in that way. It's just not useful universally.